Good afternoon folks and peoples. I'm going to try a new game, or an old game that's not quite so old, for two reasons. First of all, there was a DOS version of this game that I used to absolutely adore back in the days in the Atari ST, but DOSBox eh, is not sounding, it doesn't age, it hasn't aged well, let's put it that way. Uh, this is a more modern version of the game, featuring much of the same aspects. It performs marginally, marginally better on Windows 10. Uh, so uh, here is B17 Flying Fortress, the Mighty Eight. Uh, this is a, a microprose game dating, I think, late 90s, early 2000s, if I remember rightly. Uh, I'll get the exact dates for you another time. Uh, I already started a save game previously. Don't get alarmed. I only did one test mission, uh, which was a milk run to destroy the harbor uh, harbor in Brest. Uh, there was no fighting going on, it was just go there, drop bombs, go home, so not too much going on. Now, we're going to see how this goes. Uh, I'll first of all let you take you to my office, which looks strangely like my desk at home. <laughs> um, I'll let you take go out and see my bomber, uh, which is called Stormy Weather, and uh, that is a reference to the first game. Uh, and we have here uh, our little toy. Uh, let me just take this full screen if I may. Uh, no, no, okay. So, textures wise, it's not going to be much to write home about. One thing I really do like about this is the damage modeling is really good, and you get sufficient detail on things like my nose art. Uh, this is the B17G with the chin turret. Uh, this is the one that they simulate. You can also fly fighters, uh, which is not something I particularly enjoy. And I have my crew here. Uh, I have actually already got one guy who is injured. Who well, he was my co-pilot, so we're just going to have to see how that pans out for him. But uh, I should have a replacement guy coming in on my entry. Let me just take my inbox. So yes, my my co-pilot took a hit. I'm not sure how, but he did. possibly during the landing perhaps. So we have a vacant post there but that's hope that we're hoping for that to get filled out. Uh, and uh, we took a little bit of flack on the last run. Uh, here's my medical file there and this is the guy who's hurt. Tom M. Busby, second lieutenant. Uh, the poor man's married but hopefully he'll be up and about in no time. I'm sure his wife will have nothing to worry about. We expect him ready and ready to fly. Uh, oof, 21 days, three weeks from now. And we'll be able to return him to the aircraft once that's ready. Okay, so uh, that's where we are at the moment. Uh, let's go find out what the next mission is. I'm not the squadron commander or the operations room, so I'm not allowed there yet. I'm just responsible for my plane and my plane only. So uh, first of all, let's read the mission briefing. Today's target on the on the fourth of December. If I remember the way Americans like to do their thing, we have three possible targets: the uh, Hyde Oil Protect Production Facility, the uh, Merkweiler Oil Production Facility, and the Eurotank Oil Refinery and Storage. Standard issue stuff for anything involving oil: some bombs and some incendiary rounds. More on the incendiary because oil burns rather well at that point. And we're going to get two squadrons of P-47s following us around. These are our escorts. Uh, that'll be a total of eight ships, two four-ship flights. Lots of flak, some fighters. It's a very high priority target, so we do not want to fuck this up. Uh, and it's not been damaged at all. Uh, the next one is the secondary target, which doesn't have quite so much flak. Uh, it's not as powerful a target, but uh, it would be important for us. And the, the tertiary target is actually a high priority target than the uh, secondary target, which is interesting. Uh, but the bottom line is, is that, that that is the order that they want you to try and take them in. We have the reconnaissance film, which is just loading now. And so we'll roll that. This will be the image of the primary target. Not necessarily from our ingress point, but just so I know what it looks like and I know the land. So I'm just taking mental notes of things like the, uh, the shape of the coast uh, of the town around it. A few stacks there and a long line the Royal fight, or the two stacks of Hyken, I'd really get my cross somewhere around about here, bombs just stack all the way up there into the oil crumbs and stuff like that. 
Oh, that's the thought. That's the hope, anyway. Let's have a look at the route. I can't change it. Uh, it is just what it is. So let's just see what we're looking at. So, uh, oh, uh, we are taking off from the town of Poddington, Air Force, Army Air Force Base, just outside uh, Southampton. Uh, I have no idea where exactly. Oh, no, sorry, not Southampton, Northampton. Uh, this is way in the uh, the deeper part of. Uh, England. I am way off the grid somewhere up on the bench here, <laughs> so I don't know this particular area very well, you'll have to forgive me. This is the route in and out, so we're going back the way we came, we're going to go across the coast, touch across the coast of Colin by the looks of it, uh, this is the end board point here. Uh, we have a decision point uh, just outside an unmarked town, and make a turn across Kiel which is freaking bananas if you ask me having to fly across Kiel to get to our initial points uh, there is hide oil production facility there uh, we were to bottom out at 15,000 feet you also have the town of Hamburg which has not one not two but three and maybe even four depending on which way I go uh, flat fields that I'm going to have to be going through. That will be nasty as hell. Uh, we might not actually make out of that. Bottom line is we get out of there, we then come out here, we all regroup at the marshalling point at this town. Let's go across this blue concentration. These are airfields, so uh, we'll be well within this big blue zone here is uh, the range of enemy fighters. We will be, unfortunately, very well within that range once we get to our decision points. Uh, that is just how that stuff goes. So, at the d so we have our decision point here. This is the point where we have to decide whether we're going primary or we have to go uh, to the secondary or tertiary targets, which are both located uh, in the town of Hamburg. Not too far from each other, actually. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have recon on those, so that's just how it is. I really hate the fact that I've got to fly over certain airfields, but that is just once again what's going to have to happen. Either way, we, once we are off the coast here, we should no longer be getting engaged by uh, enemy air coverage. Uh, we should hopefully be in a much better situation there. And then if we're still alive by that time, we just have to make sure our plane lives long enough to get across the North Sea and back into friendly territory, back home at Blighty. With that in mind, uh, we've uh, done everything we can check uh, before I can go out to the uh, before I can go out to the bore to the bomber. I've got to sign my understanding of the importance of targets. That's the closest thing to John Hancock. It's way much closer than mine. And now I can start the mission. Uh, so here is my bomber uh, parked up at the ramp. I'm not going to go through a starter procedure, partly because I'm not familiar with it and partly because um, most of what you do here is actually more crew management if you're playing the game the way I play it. So we press the I button, we go to outgoing messages and we have to press M to take manual control because otherwise the AI won't do that for Master you. Master switch on. So our... Cow flaps, open left, open right. So our pilot and co-pilot are... To uh, Given it running through the checklist to start up the Mixture engines. Mixture auto rich. Just for the benefit of the first Booster video of this, on. I don't know how long the series will be going Energizing. on for, but for the first for the first for the purposes of the first video. I'll just go. I'll let them quickly go through the uh, starter procedure and run through the engines. Just to give you an idea of what you can expect to look like. Switch on. Now the damage modeling for this game Ignition is uh, very much portrayed by its graphic. Mixture graphics. auto rich. Every single part of the engine, every single part of all four of those engines, the, fuel, uh, the turbo pumps, everything is modelled internally. Uh, you can break or damage any of those and that will affect the engine performance. Uh, in, all, in some ways it will out and out kill the engine. And one thing you will learn over the course of this uh, is the absolute utter value of the B-17 and its reputation as a flying fortress. This thing ridiculous amounts of damage and uh, there are numerous screenshots available if you are so interested. Go into, the, go into your favourite search engine, Google or something like that, do an image search for B-17 damage. 
and there are so many photographs of planes that have landed on the ground with ridiculous amounts of damage. Sometimes the crew themselves were killed but the plane still got the rest of the crew home and there are 10 people on this small little plane. It looks so bad. Uh, to give you an idea of scale, you can see the size of the uh, models for the pilot co-pilot right there, right? So let me uh, give you a tour of the bird. So, first of all, let's go back into the front page here. Taxi to runway. And we have the nose section, which is right here. And you notice this great big turret, that's a pair of 50 cals there, and a single one just in the, what we call cheek turret position, or cheek gun position. It's only on the right side because over here you have the windows for the navigator to edge, which is right here. This is your uh, chin turret gunner, Paul Whitley, and he's also responsible for accurately dropping the bombs on which we are really flight for. So he has to do the drop, or I do. Our navigator is Rob Troyberg, Troyberg, and he's responsible for making sure we know where we're going. Now, one aspect of the B-17 is crew management. Uh, you, depending on how much accuracy you want, you go for lots of realism, or very little realism. Just for the record, I have turned everything to full realism. So, you could get dud bombs, you could get uh, misses, you can get uh, limited ammunition. Each gun, I think, has a thousand rounds, so two thousand for the turret. The pilot uh, will take information from the navigator. The navigator is responsible for using his knowledge of the terrain, uh, things like wind, to make sure that we get there on time accurately and we move the rest of the information to the right location. On top of that, he then feeds that information into the bomb computer right here. Yes, World War II, uh, late 30s, early 40s, you have the Northern bomb site, which you will see hopefully later on, assuming I make it there. Moving to the next uh, station, I suppose, uh, and at this point I can even order my navigator to stop navigating and go take up the uh, cheap gun position over here somewhere. Uh, we're not going to do that. I don't like doing that. I like my navigator to know where it's going. We have the pilot and co-pilot. Now it's not seen here in this cutaway, but behind the camera you have the, uh, the top tail, the top gunner. So there are three people in this cramped position. In fact, the camera's view point is pretty much where the top, the turret, the top turret gunner would be set. And he's also the chief engineer for this plane. So he's responsible for helping the pilot and co-pilot monitor all the dials and gauges and bells and whistles. He's also responsible for, uh, he's also the, the first go-to guy you go if you've got an onboard problem that you can't fix, uh, a stuck mechanical device, you need to manually lower the gear because it's damaged, stuff like that. Uh, he's usually, usually your most qualified mechanic on board, your uh, crew chief in a can, so to speak. The bomb bay is the bomb bay, you'll get to see that in action, no problem at all. The top gunner is that, is, is that incidentally also responsible for making sure these are uh, correctly armed. Uh, once in the air. Uh, we don't see that model in the game, they are presumably armed right away, uh, but in the real uh, B-17s it's my knowledge that uh, once they were over the North Sea, uh, the top turret gunner would be responsible for going along this narrow beam, uh, which allows you to go from the front to the back, and he would be responsible for pulling the pins uh, out of the top and tail of each one of these bombs to make sure they were correctly armed, and he'd be all responsible for, at that, at that point in time, they could go off at, point, at a detonation point. Scary point of note is that there is no safety net because obviously the bombs need to fall freely. So when the doors are open, if for some reason the uh, someone needs to travel through while the bomb doors are open, they run the risk of slipping and falling down the side. Uh, I don't know if that's modeled in the game, and I haven't had it happen to me yet. But I don't plan on trying. This is the radio gunner, uh, not the radio gunner, the radio officer, and he's responsible for using the giant radio that's uh, featured in, let's see, he's responsible for operating our radio, uh, which is, if I can find it, here. This wireless site, you don't have to worry about the buttons and clicks, uh, you just have to click on outgoing or incoming message. You can read uh, incoming messages from uh, this thing with target reports, weather reports, you can get them later. Uh, and any messages you can send to the group formation, such as changing altitudes, leave information, join information, that sort of stuff. Generally speaking, you are cleared for taking. These are the kind of messages you hear and you don't them. Next we have uh, our armament station. Now we have three people in this place. We have Mark Fish and Mark and Ketelo, uh, port and starboard side gunners. Uh, they are responsible for using these uh, waste guns at the side to help defend the plane from side attacks. And the crazy guy, the bomb, the 
ball turret gunner. He, uh, there is actually a man inside this thing, crawled up, curled up. Now you'll notice we're taking off at about 7.30. He's already been in there for maybe about 15-20 minutes at least. And sadly, uh, he will be there for the duration of the flight. Uh, all the way from here to Germany and back again. He was responsible for the belly of both this plane and the and largely the rest of the formation. And he just about sits there, you can almost see him in the background there, curled up. Last but not least, we have my favourite position, the tail gunner. He sits, as his name implies, right in the tail of the plane. Oh. And he has somewhat better field of view. And uh, this field of view means that he has a pair of plane tail guns that can attack anything that comes up on the bomber's back end. At this point in time, I'm going to skip forward a little bit and let the rest of the planes take off and uh, give you a, a quick form up. Okay. So, it's about a little while later. Don't worry about the smoke, it's a bit of an interesting glitch of time acceleration. My plane the engines may be slightly overheating while the rest of the bomber catches up. Uh, that should clear itself up once we get altitude, which we are very slowly doing. Pilot, navigator, pick up a heading of zero seven six. Repeat zero. Okay, seven, so we've been six. in the air for about half an hour now. Uh, Roger. Let's ask the pilot. Let's ask the where the navigator where he thinks he is. Now this is where things can get interesting because if you screw this up, you will not get an accurate bomb run, and you'll have to correct yourself, which can make things pretty eerie. And how do pilots in World War II navigate without radars or radios? Uh, well, they look at the window, basically. Uh, so we've got this town over here, just off of our turning point. Let's see what that's supposed to look like. Well, where could we be? I mean, to be honest, this isn't the best example yet because we have a great big arrow over the tiny area that I really want to check out. But well, we're not done yet, we can use things like map, like roads, routes. So let's have a look around. Do we see anything else? We've got the town directly to our 6 o'clock. Look at that be? Uh, we may actually be this far along over here. Uh, you can see the collection of towns over there. Uh, we are coming over a town right now. This is a big enough one that I would expect it to show up on the map, so let's see. That curve in the map. Okay. Okay, so we are actually over Pottington. Which, given our takeoff point, makes much more sense. And we just left city limits of Pottington. So you can see just how off the uh, AI navigator thought we were compared to where we actually are. And if I've got this position right, when I look at the external view, we will at some point in time come to this crossroads between the road and the river. And we can tell by the shadow on the plane that we're really not that far off actually. And this is a great kind of navigational fix. So blah, 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 blah. we're just waiting and when my shadow crosses that river, okay so we are just a little off that. So we're just a little off to the left of that there. And that seems like a really anal uh, correction to make. A lot of people will think that's ridiculous. But when I make a straight run, run line across the North Sea with little to no geographic fixes, I'm going to want as much accuracy as possible just getting across the ocean. That's us for the moment. I'll come back to us in a little while longer. So the time skip is set to about 10 minute, roughly 10 minute intervals. And unless something happens, we will not get interrupted when every time I press that button. This is where things start getting interesting because you'll notice, first of all, the formation of fires as they're scrambling. What is that? Well, don't worry, it's friendly, don't worry. We just have to wait till they're done. Uh, that's, our, that's our first wave of escorts. And we now have another complication that uh, didn't feature in the first version of the game back in the early 90s. We have cloud cover. Now this cloud cover is obscuring my vision. I can't quite see the towns, the roads that are driving below me, so that makes things a little more difficult. The other thing we might not have considered here is actually the effect of wind. The wind could be blowing us left or right, so we need to adjust for that. And how do we adjust for that, I hear you ask. Well, we consult this little gadget. 
So, you'll notice, hopefully, that things are passing uh, from the front to the back there. Uh, and you'll notice that there's a, a set of dashed lights. When I adjust these dashed lights, this can tell us how bad the drift is in degrees. And what I'm ideally trying to do here is keep a certain reference point in between or on top of a set of lights. Every time you make an adjustment, the yeah, pilot corrects for this. So, for example, you pick a prominent location, like the, like the edge of the street, and look, it's drifting all the way over there, so we know how far off we are there. And then we double check that. Look, see this guy here is following this dash line, hopefully. No! Okay, that was way out to lunch. So we uh, recorrect. And by the way, you'll notice that it doesn't, it doesn't always totally start because there are gusts of wind. So the wind is then with cleverly modeled. Now it's getting harder to see because of the clouds. So that's an extra challenge. A little incremental changes like this are normally made by the AI, but obviously that if you do a bit more accurate job, then the navigator's own skill at this job improves. And it will make your life a hell of a lot easier later on once you've got your crew up to a certain level of initiative and capability. So you can basically leave them the hell alone. However, sometimes the AI likes to say, nope, you've got it totally wrong. This is what's actually going on. And well, the jump in directions, whether you're right or wrong, that's the correction you get. Uh, and all you can really do is uh, wait for the clouds to clear and give another go. And unfortunately, we're going to have a clearing coming up front soon. Really looking now for more reference points because sooner or sooner or later I'm going to come up to the coast and that is uh, that's where we've got no more chances for navigational aids. So there's a little town that we passed over right up. Uh, that's it there. So we're actually not that far off. We drifted slightly to the right. So we uh, modify our position. The navigator puts in a new course for the pilot. We make wind adjustments again. that needs a couple of passes and requires a little bit of patience. And then of course the little gusts of wind don't exactly help. Okay, so we've got a little bit more of a, a, a better drift now. And that makes sense because uh, we drifted further away from the air that we thought we had, so it makes sense that we're drifting off course to the left, which because we did drift further away from the uh, town that our flight plan allowed for. get this right, we should pass the northern edge of the town of Norwich, which is, I'm guessing this is a great big black spot over here. And when you look outside the plane, and I know it looks like I'm looking externally, I'm just cheating because I'm too lazy to go to the chin turret and look at the front window, I'd see the exact same thing. Uh, yeah, no, that looks uh, close. Bend in the river, apparently. Uh, there it is off to our right, actually, so we've drifted slightly. That's amazing how accurate we were there. That's that's good. That's pretty good, actually. And that will probably be our last proper navigational fix before we uh, head off out there. So we'll uh, come back once we've got something important to tell you. Coming up onto the coast of... Oh, hello! That's, that. That's our P-47 friends. So we're coming up onto the uh, northern coast of uh, the Netherlands, and we're probably a little closer, actually, than we thought we were. Uh, 
Um, but it's very hard for me to measure on a 2D screen. Exactly. That's the Dutch coast down there. Yep. Well, I'm, I'm glad you can tell that at least. That's that's really handy. Looks like at this current heading, I'm going to just skip the edge, the northern edge of that collection of islands. So I am going to put us. Which Long Island is that? This is the bit where I need to start being more observant. So we've got this little cove here, which is this guy here. Oops, that was the wrong button. See the enter button and uh, my camera keys are right next to each other. <laughs> and apparently the collection of fighters are scrambling, which means I'm probably going to have to start keeping my eye out for fighters very shortly. So I'm very close to that little guy there, so we are going to make a course correction. We have clearly drifted quite far. That is exactly why I wanted to have those corrections in place because it is it should be pretty obvious by now that that would have been a really bad way of uh, having an error in our bomb run. We would have probably missed our target completely, not later on, but lost. It seems crazy to think that we've got like, a formation of fighters. Unfortunately, this little handy dandy thing here says I can look at P-17s or other P-47s. I'm not going to look at the P-47s. Uh, they are out with the scope of my interest in the videos. So, we're going to keep on barreling on. So, now, another formation of fighters is just family. And look, ich bin Nazis! It's Nazis. Uh, so we are looking at 109s and they're carrying drop tanks. They need to come out and do us mischief. Yes, you're looking at this right. I could take control and start intercepting my own planes. I'm not going to do that. I prefer to defend. But yes, it is possible within this game to control both German and uh, US Air Forces, fighters and uh, bombers. They're in there. Got our friends dotting here, there, and everywhere. Which is pretty handy, I must admit, because they're hopefully going to deal with the uh, for, with, uh, the worst of our uh, stuff. So on my setup, these guys need business. Okay, so we're coming up to the coast now, or at least we hopefully are. Yes, and uh, we are blessed with normally being slightly off course there. That further over this side as a rough estimate for now. And we can tell by how the plane points itself forward. Or a bit where the pilot thinks it needs to go. So we're looking for that little bump in the, uh, cool, in the uh, bay there. There it is there. And it's a very rough eyeball. Yeah, that's close enough. My patented TLAR method, that's, that stands for that looks about right. And uh, we are going to bandit on. Bandit Oh, okay, so we've been pulled out our time skip for bandits. This is where things get fun. So. Tracers going by. I'm in the chimp turret position right now. We're looking to see what's going around. Lots of tracers. One of the, one of the bombers is toast already. This is not good. Show me what we got. Show me what we got. Come on. Two bombers dead. Right? This is not a good start. We've got two bombers kill each other. Very probably. Like that very normally. This is weird. Right, I need to look behind me. And now I have to be very careful with what I ID as well because we could have friendlies coming around as well. Okay, so we have some that little spec over there. This is the limit of my ability to turn on the trial turret. I hope he comes back in for some more. so I can look and see what's coming, what's coming out. We're out to the right. At this point in time, all I can see is little specks. Now, the 
top turret is controlled by an AI at the moment. It's a little computer right on the bottom there. He's spinning around looking for someone. If you guys could find someone and shoot them, that'd be swell. Things get fun, folks. You start having to make an educated guesswork as to where you are, thanks to the clouds. Well, we got directly behind us a uh, collection of islands. We're a long way away, of course, so that's a lot 
lot less helpful than you think. So you know if morale's not really feeling that great, remember to panic. That's a fun one. That's a fun one to deal have to deal with. Five minutes before another flag site decides to take us on. Oh no, hang on a minute. Let's check the map here. Join formation. Some cloud. Weather at secondary target is believed to be cloudy. Within seven ten cloud of black and black. Well, we'll stick with primary for now. That can that black is nasty. Weather at tertiary target is believed to be fair. We have four ten clouds so and we'll black. We'll stick with the primary target, I guess, because the clouds uh something no worse than secondary or tertiary. Uh, this is where you can hear the your little hits coming off the wings and stuff like that, you can see little chunks of wing coming out, little bits of damage. It's not really clear right now, but you will be seeing more of that probably as the uh, bomber flies through more and more flak. Plenty of flak sites to hit yet. Other planes have uh, got much more noticeable damage, as you can see by all these little things here. That shrapnel is some nasty stuff, but we've got aluminium wings here, so uh, they can uh, they really can hit. And, uh, oh, I just took a hit. You can tell I'm peppered already. Good idea to check the crew, make sure nobody's part. Uh, normally you'd hear about it, so. Good. Everyone's there's no things there, but look at that. Look at that. That's, that's brutal. That. So 
So uh, that tail gunner there uh, has had pretty big holes cut out of his bait. See all this bit of black mangling that's over there here. It's going to be his uh, hope he's sitting comfortable there because uh, it's going to be getting real chilly down there now. I've seen daylight through parts of my plane, which is <laughs> never a good sign. You should not, as a rule, see uh, daylight through your rudder, for example. But uh, these planes are, by design, capable of taking ridiculous amounts of punishment, and that it does actually reflect their real life abilities. Right over keel, which means we'll probably get more flat. Flat coming in shortly. We're just pushing over this little tippy bit here, so we'll be able to put ourselves there instead. Yes, makes more sense. Sanity checking that. Yeah, there we go. So already, nope. I'm going to now order him to take up the bomb site. Oh, he's already on it. There we go. Just need to wait for the turn. Pilot and navigator. Okay, turn coming up. Now we need to start getting sight on the uh, enemy. Closer in good old fashioned game style, the uh, 3D art starts rendering up a bit more strenuously. And we'll see if 
across here and suggest ever so slightly gently closer to its target, which is what I'm trying to do. Big oil pipeline will be a nice one because the incendiary bomb should cook that off quite nicely. You're just going to go into that, I think. This is what's known as saturation bomb. We're trying to hit an area, we probably won't get it all. Is that where I also will find out that based on the amount of left to right or right to left jump I get, just how accurate we feel with our windage. Down. I'm just pressing shift and K to go look left and right every now and then, keep it on target. I'm pressing shift and K again to go back to the uh, the fine tuning mode. See the uh, right hand index slowly tracking up. That's the left hand index. I'm just going to jump. Oh, we've got uh, a top gunner having a bit of a panic attack there. Get some of the defend to him in a moment. Right. We'll get more detailed resolution here. I want to drop the bomb right here where the plan is. Because that will have a better effect. Start committing on a decision point now. Get more detail as we get closer. And I'm changing my mind once again because I like to look at these big squares and cranes. On the other hand, there is nothing really structural there that I can make out yet. So we're just going to go with. Fuck it, we're going to go right on top of it. Right. Yes, we get structural detail there. Oh damn, that's 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 a good spot there. That looks like a good spot there. I'm going to destroy the production plant, not the storage. Oh, and it's coming in. Oh, what the hell? Yep, that was a play. That was a plane flying right underneath us. That's a holy move when we've got bombs about to come up. Okay, we'll know when the bombs are about to drop because I'll get a little bit of a cinematic cut, which I'm not exactly the plan of, but hey. Oh, we have ourselves a go-around situation. Ah yeah, screwed up there, there, there with the last minute cor the corrections. We done goofed. So we're going to have to tell everyone to go around now, which uh, we, will not, we will not get a lot of fans for I'm afraid, but uh, sometimes shit happens. And I need to find out where my... See, this guy has decided to take up a bit of initiative and say, hey, uh, we need to, uh, I need to go over here and uh, help defend the place. So the way they are... Radio operator there is going to start traveling through. He's going to, this is where you get to see him uh, hopping along this way, by the way. 
Wait a minute. Yes, yes, that's okay then. So this is what I was talking about. He has to travel between the bottoms on a little catwalk. But the door's open by the way. And we're going to tell everyone we're aborting and going round as soon as he decides to take his position. Thank you. We want to go around. Pilot bomb. So the pilot has got control of the plane back around again, and we are on the right So we are turning. Ah! Oh, damn it! That was the worst thing ever. I could have got shot on that. Let's start watching for other guys now. The other thing we have to watch out for is that these bombers are flying at each other because they are unfortunately prone to doing that. Shot on him off the waist gun here, where was he? There he is. Well, that was terrible. We got fire. We got fire. So he needs to fight this. He needs to fight this shit now. Right, so our race gunner's off to fight that fire. So I need every other gunner on point. Ooh, lots of shoots. We must have lost the bomber. Oh, hello. Yeah, you came back to position, that's fine. Uh, four blocks left side, so let's see what we got, what we got, what we got, come on. Do it. Side ship. I don't know why I'm looking around with my head. Oh, shit. 
That's not good. That's that's really not good. Oh. Everyone bail out. Everyone bail. Fuck out now. Everyone bail the fuck out. Come on. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. We got eight guys out. And that guy died. Well, that went rather well for a first episode, I thought. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, crap. Complete mess. <laughs> Lots of people dead. Everyone dead. Crushed enemy territory. We're all dead. Well, that went terribly well. Dear Mrs. Ghost Dog, the Secretary of War gets to inform you of the death of your husband who was a freaking idiot and couldn't hit the broad side of the barn even if it had, even if it had a giant freaking yellow cross on it. <laughs> well, we'll obviously be loading that up and giving that another try at some point. Uh, but for now I hope you enjoyed this little primer on the game and uh, hopefully we'll have a little bit better luck on the next version. Have a good, have a good evening guys.